when they walk into our living room, they see three motorcycles and their first uh, reaction is to you must have an understanding wife. And I say, yes, I, I have a very understanding wife. People think I'm a little eccentric for having motorcycles in there, um, perhaps. But again, as we all appreciate, this is art. It happens to have two wheels, but it's art in the same way that something up on a wall is a painting. It is kept inside. Over the years, I put it in various museums, various displays, and it's always really appreciated by people. Uh, but at this point, um, it is sitting in our living room. Uh, there are two reasons for it. One, it looks fantastic in our living room, and I'm always happy to look up at it and take a moment just to think how special it is and how wonderful it is. And at the same time, I'm also out of room and have nowhere else to park it. Hi, my name is John Stein and I am in Los Angeles, California. And in front of me is a very um, historic drag racing motorcycle called Stage Fright. During the mid 60s, uh, this was the quickest and fastest drag bike in the world. Uh, it competed both domestically as well as internationally. Its best time was around 9.70 seconds and its fastest speed was around 151 miles an hour. Uh, when this motorcycle was built originally, it was uh, built by Max Kelly, who again was an aerospace engineer in Southern California. At that time, two engines was better than one, and many of the most successful drag bikes of the late 50s, early 60s, and even into the early 70s had two engines. The engines here are 650 Triumph engines. They are the pre-unit model that was from 1959 and before. Because no transmission could stand up to the power of two fuel motors, uh, the transmissions were removed entirely. One transmission remains back here, and in that transmission is a single gear. You didn't need first, second, and third, and fourth. There was enough power and torque in the motors that they could carry fourth gear only. As you can also see, there's a whole lot of plumbing here. Fuel lines, you've got oil lines, you've got a, <laughs> a whole lot of lines, and it's a bit of a, a, bit of a puzzle here, but uh, fortunately, my friend Wes, Wes White over at Four Aces Cycle that helped restore this bike uh, is a whole lot smarter than I and he knew exactly what to do. So um, the, the way that it was treated and the um, expertise with which it, he put it together is really the work of Wes uh, and not really me at all. I just had the good fortune to find it. I also had the good fortune to find Wes. You've got the aluminum frame and everywhere possible in the aluminum frame uh, it was drilled for lightness. It was drilled in such a way that those holes didn't uh, hurt the strength of the frame, but everywhere you look, whether it's here, 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 uh, the foot pegs, everything is drilled for lightness. I don't know how many pounds that that would cut out, but every pound, every ounce cut is um, the opportunity to get more performance. They did have problems with it periodically that the frame would crack. It cracked especially over here where this thin down tube is. Uh, as you can see, it's built up with a whole lot of weld but this pipe is not that big, and these are two powerful motors, and it did have a tendency to crack here at various times. But um, again, it was the first aluminum frame and uh, significant for that reason alone. Uh, the front end on this machine is quite small. It uh, was taken from a Triumph Cub 200cc. As you can see, the tubes are quite small, quite spindly, and <laughs> um, not exactly uh, confidence inspiring, but they did work after all. Uh, the front wheel doesn't have a brake as you can see, rather it has a spool hub, no brake whatsoever in back then and that's the way it was. Nobody ran a brake on the front. Uh, they did have them on the rear of course, but that wasn't especially powerful being stock. Uh, so the machine had the ability to go quickly and fast, not that great at uh, coming to a stop. The tanks, people always enjoy the, the gas tanks and um, they were um, this tubular style which um, became one of the hallmarks of drag racing bikes during the 50s and primarily 60s. Uh, but they were uh, two of these, they're made from steel, uh, nicely polished. Uh, this is gas, this is gas, each of which supplies the carburetors on that side of the engine. But underneath it here is an oil tank, which as you can see from the lines, supplies the rocker boxes and the pumps and everything like that. When this bike was racing, um, there were classes for machines that use gas and then the especially trick ones use nitromethane. 
This was one of the ones that used nitromethane. The mixture was about 90% nitromethane with about 10% propylene oxide, which in fact was rocket fuel. But there was no gas, it was all fuel, hence the bike is called a fueler. Uh, one of the challenges when uh, the guys would build the twin engine kind of bikes was how do you harness the power from the front engine to the rear engine, then onto the clutch, and finally to the rear wheel. And what they did cleverly, and then became the, really the only way to do it, was to run chain from the uh, sprocket off the front crank through here to the sprocket off the second crank, and then where there's double row chain into the clutch, transmission, and finally to the rear wheel. Very effective. Sometimes it would break, but generally it didn't.